Hi everyone, today we're gonna explore Langgraph and the question, can we get rid of the Langchain expression language and just use Langgraph instead? I know that many of you have trouble with the LCL and its pipe syntax, so can we get rid of it? So first, if you don't know either LCL or Langgraph, I have for both a small crash course on this channel where you can learn uh, both of them with very basic examples. So to discuss the topic, I will show you a very basic rag pipeline, first with LCL and then with Langgraph. At the end of the video, I will tell you my probably unpopular opinion and I would be very appreciative if you watch the video until the end, make your own conclusion and tell me what you think in the comments. But let's directly start. What are we going to build? We put data in a vector store, embed it and make a query with a similarity search against the database, then put the output of the database as variable in a template, send everything to the LLM to get a final response. I assume that 99% of you who watch this video know that pattern in and out. So let's jump straight into the code. Okay, I'm in VS Code and if you want to code along, just clone the repository from GitHub, link is in the description in this video, and go to the LCL versus Langgraph IPython notebook. So first we're gonna import the .env file by using load.env because I'm gonna use OpenAI. So we import the OpenAI API key, which is in this .env file. Then we import some classes from Langchain, like the document class, OpenAI embeddings, Chroma for the vector store, runnable path through, output parser, and so on, everything we need for a simple rag pipeline. So we create an instance of OpenAI embeddings, which we use to embed our documents. These two documents are our two documents. So the content is the dog loves to eat pizza and the cat loves to eat lasagna. And we put that in the vector store by using the from documents class method here from Chroma, pass the docs, pass the embeddings function and convert that to, as a retriever. We pass search quarks to only get two documents back. So we always get these two documents, but it doesn't really matter here. It's just about the logic we implement. Then we've got another function format docs. In the format docs function, we extract the page content and create a new line character here. So we serialize this uh, document class. Okay, let's run this, create our vector store. This takes a few seconds now, and then we can implement our retrieval chain. So we're first gonna create a template. So we pass the context, this is the data which we get from the vector store, and then we pass also the question as variable. So this is the normal retrieval chain you find in every documentation of length chain. So what's happening here? So this origin dictionary creates a so-called runnable parallel. And what's happening here is that we pass the initial question unchanged to this runnable pass through because we need a question for the prompt. But for the context, we gonna run the invoke function on that retriever and get the most similar documents which we find by providing this question. Then we pass that with the pipe syntax to the format the docs function. And so as context, we got these two documents serialized. We pass this output to the prompt where we resolve the variables context and question, which we created here and pass that to the model. And the model will create uh, an answer and we pass the answer to an output parser. So that's the chain. So we create a DAG workflow. So we pass in input and create output. So this is what a normal data pipeline looks like. Then we use the invoke method with the input, what food does the cat like? And as you can see, this will create the output lasagna. So that's not too much code. And I think it's very straightforward if you know the Langchain expression language a bit. So let's have a look at how this works with Langgraph. So with Langgraph, we don't need that rag pipeline. We only need the prompt, the model and the output parser because we will use a separate function to retrieve the documents from the vector store. Then we define the agent state. The agent state defines where we store our data, which we retrieve, which we format, and also the output, which was created by the LLM. So everything is stored in a central place. So that's the difference to LCL, where we just pass in data through a pipeline. Here in Langgraph, everything is stored in this central agent state. Langgraph also works with nodes and edges. So each node is one function which is executed. So for each step, we have to provide a function which uses the state and does something with it and at the end returns the state. So for the getDocs function, we extract the question and pass that to the retriever. Here we run the invoke method, pass the question 
get the docs and store the docs in the raw docs uh, variable of that agent state. And then we return the uh, complete state at the end. The format function retrieves that raw doc state and then we run that function. So here we just run it in line and we pass that to the formatted doc state. And then we again return the full state. For the generate function, we extract the question, the format the docs, and then use our chat with prompt pipeline where we pass in the dictionary question and also the context, which is the formatted docs. And then we store that result, which was generated by the LLM in the generation attribute of the state. And again, we return the full state. So this is how that works with the land graph. So we have to define that functions. So first we of course have to run all of the code, import everything, create the agent state, and then we're going to create our functions. And then what you have to do in LangGraph is to define a workflow. So you have to use the state graph function, which inherits now from the agent state. So this is our workflow. And then we have to provide nodes. So a node is, has got a key and the function which is run. So first we're going to run the get docs function. After that, we're going to run the format docs function. After that, we're going to run the generate function. The order of execution is defined by the edges. So we add an edge, which gets a key, get docs. And the second key is the end key. So we pass from the get node key, the output to the format docs node. And we want to pass from format docs to generate. From generate, we use a special end class, which means that the workflow has now ended. The only thing we have to do now is to set an entry point. So this is the first node that is executed. So we're gonna, at the end, compile our workflow, create a new runnable. And what's very nice is that we can create this very cool visualization of our workflow. I think this is very helpful to actually see what's going on. So we have to start, then get docs, format docs, generate, and then we are finished. So let's now run the invoke method here with the question, what food does the cat like? And I added some print statements in each of the functions so we can always see the state which we currently have in each node. So we can see get docs. We can see that the state raw docs is, not, is currently none, format the docs is none, and generation is none. So if we don't provide the state in the initial invoke method, that's none by default. Then we get format docs. Here we get our documents. And after that, we get the formatted documents, which look like this. So here we've got our new line. And yeah, that's what we're going to use to create the final answer. And at the end, we've got this generation. So we can access it like this, just a normal dictionary. And here we can see this the same output that we also get with the language and expression language. Okay, so in my opinion, that was pretty straightforward for both approaches. Both work fine. So let's compare the code. We get much more code for LangGraph, so less code is probably better or not. Yes and no. So the LangGraph team suggests the following. Use LCL if you need a DAG workflow and use LangGraph if you need cycles in a workflow. So in this example, we've got a REC pipeline, which is clearly a DAG workflow. So the LCL is the suggested way of the LangChain team. And now my unpopular opinion, and I think the biggest benefit is the flexibility of LangGraph. Think about it. Let's say that we now want to include the documents in the output of the REC pipeline with LCL. So how would you do that? Not that easy. You would have to change the code. How would you do that in LangGraph? Very easy. Just access the raw docs key of the state. So you have everything you need in the state. LCL chains are also very hard to debug. With LangGraph, you've got everything nicely modularized. It's very nice and easy to debug and easy to unit test because every node has just a single function or runnable and only works with the state. So everything you want if you want to design larger software. So my honest opinion is currently that I will probably use LangGraph for everything which is a little bit more complex than the very basic LCL examples since defining workflows with nodes and edges and having all my data stored in a central place is so much easier than dealing with all these pretty complex and inflexible LCL pipelines. So as always in the internet, I'm just a single person with a subjective opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. I would be really interested in what you think about this. So please leave me a comment and let's make a respectful discussion. So thanks for watching. See you. Bye bye.